you own a small business, ever struggle with how to make sure you're as secure as you and your customers want and need you to be? Well, rest assured, it's always a challenge, but guess what? I've got you covered. I've got a top five list of things you gotta focus on and I'm gonna run it through for you, coming up now. Hello everybody, my name is Adam Gordon, an educator here at IT Pro TV. I'm coming at you today with a top five list of best practices for small businesses that are looking to secure their infrastructure and data in 2021. Number one up on my list is you setting up two-factor authentication, what we call 2FA. Most people actually commonly refer to this as just simply MFA, multi-factor authentication. But the reality is there is a small difference and whether you refer to it as 2FA, setting up simply a secondary challenge for authentication purposes, or multi-factor using two or more challenge prompts for authentication, the reality is we gotta get you away from simply using usernames and passwords. Weak passwords are arguably one of the biggest reasons cyber attacks occur today. And as a result of that, they are the probably single biggest reason that you are gonna get attacked and ultimately hacked if all you do is rely on users maintaining good password hygiene as your primary mechanism for authentication to secure resources. 2FA verifies the identity of an individual seeking to access whatever that asset is, whether it's a server, whether it's a piece of information on the server, whether it's a VPN, it doesn't matter what it is. We use a second method beyond just a username and a password. We might use some sort of authenticator app that's on your smartphone, maybe a biometric scan. Maybe we scan your eye looking at your iris or your retina, maybe a voice print match. Maybe a fingerprint. We've all seen these things on TV and movies. And yes, they really do work and work fabulously well and are almost impossible to fool in terms of getting someone into a system that doesn't belong there. We may use physical security keys. These may be UB keys, right? USB keys we insert into a laptop or a device to read some sort of pre-stored token string or identifier and or some sort of token that generates a random signal or prompt that we then have to verify. There's all sorts of ways that you can implement two-factor or multi-factor authentication, but moving towards that thought process is one of the most significant things you can do to stay secure in 2021. All right, moving on, number two, equally important, educate all of your employees from the top of the organization all the way down to the bottom about phishing. That's not going fishing, that's fishing with a PH. This is what we hear so much about today and for several years now about people getting unsolicited messages in email, in text messages, voicemail messages, you name it, getting those messages, allowing someone to try to socially engineer and trick that person into clicking on a link or providing secure access information that they're not supposed to share. Communicate security measures to everybody in the organization. I don't care how senior or how junior that person is, everybody should be educated the same way. Lead by example and everybody will follow. Make sure the resources utilized are simplified and easy to understand. Don't overcomplicate things, don't scare people. Tell them the truth, keep it simple, and people will understand what to do. Something as simple as literally a see something, say something slogan or campaign. Educating and reminding people that when something seems unusual and out of place, it most likely is. It is devastatingly effective, and you will be surprised just how far that conversation will take you towards being more secure. Focus on onboarding educational content, meaning as we hire new people, how do we begin to train them and inculcate them into the culture of security that the organization needs to have? What about internal cyber communications? Things like security newsletters, monthly emails, and messaging on a regular cadence, including maybe posters printed and put around offices or sent out to individuals that are working remotely to remind them of best practices. And finally, run phishing tests fish in your own ponds, looking to catch people that are not paying attention or trained properly. Don't blame them, but simply use it as an opportunity to reinforce what they should be doing positively. And you'll see those education investments are gonna pay off handsomely 
as we continue looking at our top five trends in terms of best practices that you can implement to stay secure. Number three is an interesting one. It's been around for some time, but really just started to become very popular in the last year or two, zero trust network access, or just zero trust architecture. The idea is that this is becoming a major alternative to what we think of traditionally as VPNs, virtual private network access. How do we allow remote external users to securely access resources inside of our corporate networks? The idea with zero trust network access is just that, zero trust. Don't automatically trust anything or anyone inside or outside of the network until there is absolute irrefutable proof that you can. Access should be granted essentially on a need to know least privilege basis once we do feel that we can trust somebody. There are four core tenets of zero trust network architecture that you want to think about. We want to separate application access from network access. We don't want to give someone access to the network and immediately grant them access to applications. Allow them access incrementally to these different areas as we verify and validate them at every step in the process. Only allow and make outbound connections to ensure that unauthorized users cannot see network and application infrastructure. Don't allow the bad actors to see anything they're not supposed to see. Authorized users should have full, or excuse me, should not be granted or given full network access. Again, the idea of need to know and least privilege. If I only need to see one server, don't let me see the whole network. Let me just see that one server, do my job there, and then leave. And finally, the internet is now our new corporate network. We no longer have a boundary that says, well, this is internal, this is external. Our boundary is wherever your device is anywhere in the world. We have to zero in on and secure your devices at point of use, and we cannot trust anything from that device all the way back to our network. We have to assume everything is untrustworthy and act accordingly. And number four, almost at the end, but not quite, data privacy and third party, what we call supply chain risk management, SCRM. They become distinct disciplines. This is often something most organizations, especially small businesses, are not focused on. They kind of lump everything together. Well, I got to pay attention to data. I got to secure it. I got to worry about regulations. I got to make sure I'm compliant. But those two things kind of happen together. Well, the reality is they intermingle, yes, but they are also distinctly different. And here's why. We can't possibly secure all the data and meet all the regulatory compliance requirements we have at local, regional, federal, and even international levels today unless we extend our thought process about how to manage and provide data privacy into our supply chain because we're giving access to that data to external third parties, vendors, and suppliers, and then they are outsourcing our business down their supply chains, two, three, four levels in some cases, to source all the goods and services we are buying. If we don't understand the exact nature of those relationships, we don't know who has access to our data and where that data is being used and under what conditions, we're not doing our jobs and we're not exercising due diligence and acting with due care. It's incumbent on all of you, especially as small business owners or IT security professionals working to secure data in small businesses, to understand the full scope of the operational landscape or threat environment that your business exists in today. If you don't bring in and incorporate your vendors and get them to play a part in securing that data and get them to be part of the solution associated with compliance, you're unfortunately only seeing half the picture. And number five, last item on our top five list of best practices for small businesses to remain secure in 2021, consider managed IT services. I talk to a lot of my small business customers and they hear me say this and say, well, Adam, you know, we've invested our time and our energy in understanding our infrastructure, training our IT people. Why would we want to outsource? The reality is the world's getting more complicated by the day. We have more and more technology, more and more capabilities, but also more threats and risks that are leveraging that technology, whether we understand it or not. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are not just being used by the good guys. They're being used by the bad guys. Advanced persistent threats are being launched every day against businesses, as is ransomware, as are data breaches of a variety of types. If you don't have the up-to-date, up-to-the-minute skill sets on staff in-house, 
how can you possibly expect to do battle against people that in some cases are light years ahead of you with regards to skills and capabilities? Well, MSPs, Managed Service and Managed Security Service Providers, MSSPs, can be part of that solution. They provide a wide range of services, everything from network monitoring and cyber threat prevention and education, all the way through project management and network operations center management, NOx, 24 by seven manned and staffed so that you don't have to worry about whether someone's paying attention on the front line because you know there are always trained professionals there. Now the trick here is to integrate them into your existing infrastructure and your existing staffing models let your teams benefit from that expertise, learn from it over time, but also leverage it to become the best they can be. All right, so that's been my top five security list for 2021 of tips that you, as a small business owner, can execute on, keeping your business secure as you make your way through the threat landscape. But I bet you there's a lot more you're worried about, and guess what? I've got another solution for it. It's gonna make this even more impactful. You can join us over at IT Pro TV to continue learning about all of the latest trends, tips, techniques, as well as get training for all of your IT security and IT professional teams. We offer a wide ranging variety of opportunities in different ways for you to learn, to understand, as well as to experience the latest technology. And oh, by the way, you can also join us over on our YouTube channel so the learning continues 24 seven. I've been Adam Gordon, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon.